The year is 1330. I came here to the castle to work as a servant to, to get money to send home to my family, as they, like most people, have a hard time getting by. When I arrived here, I soon crossed paths with the deputy constable of the castle, William de Eland. He took a shine to me. Oh, the name's John, by the way. And soon enough, my role here became working alongside him as his assistant, which led me to witness one of the greatest acts of rebellion of the 14th century. The story leading up to this event begins with the corrupt ruling of King Edward II. Although married to Isabella of France, he was engaged in a love affair with a member of court, Pierce Gaveston. The pair were flamboyant to say the least, and they loved flaunting their power. Eventually, that homophobic lot at court, disapproving of their actions, banished Gaveston, and, and he returned, and they had him executed. Edward was distraught, and let's just say, the kingdom took a turn for the worse, as his weak and corrupt ruling only worsened. It didn't stop him from finding a new love affair though, as this time a father and son, both named Hugh Dispenser. Yeah, no one really knows what went on there, but it is clear that he showed them the same affection as he had done Gaveston. Anywho, history repeats itself and the court had had enough. Alas, this time they weren't quick enough as both father and son imprisoned and executed anyone who questioned their newfound power, including a lord named Roger Mortimer. Meanwhile, Queen Isabella, if you can remember her, I don't think Edward did, well, as you can imagine, she left. Went on a trip to France where who should she meet but Mortimer? The pair became lovers, bonding over their shared hatred of Edward. But they couldn't just live happily ever after. Fueled by thirst for power and revenge, they raised an army and took England back. Edward was captured and both the dispensers were hung, drawn and quartered. The crown was given to Edward's son, Edward III, but everyone knew who was really in charge. Isabella and Mortimer had gotten exactly what they wanted, but it became clear that as long as Edward II was around, that that was all under threat. You see, a few people were benefiting from Edward's corruption. And so they tried to break him out of prison once or twice. In order to resolve this predicament, it all gets a bit dark. They never heard from King Edward again. They say that for a discreet death, he was killed by having a red hot poker shoved up his backside. You can see how they felt about his gay love affair. They pinned it on natural causes. Seems they'd become just like those that they overthrew. Isabella and Mortimer had become just as corrupt as those before them. And like Edward forgetting about his wife, they for soon forgot about Edward's son, Edward III. Which brings us here to the castle. It was here on the 19th of October, 1330, that Nottingham was blessed with such royalty. Isabella and Mortimer came here to the castle, having caught wind of Edward III's plans. They came here to seek refuge. However, my boss, William de Eland, alerted Edward of a secret tunnel-like passageway carved from the sandstone rock leading from outside the castle to inside the living chambers. Edward knew that this was the perfect opportunity to strike and so he and his men were led by William in the dead of night along the passageway and into the chambers where Isabella and Mortimer were staying. This next bit I saw unfold myself as I was ordered to stay here 
and keep guard by William at the passageway entrance inside the castle. Chaos broke out as Isabella and Mortimer put up a fight. However, carnage followed as their guards and all their supporters were mercilessly killed. Isabella and Mortimer were captured and Mortimer was dragged back down the passageway and taken to the Tower of London to be executed, which is why it now goes by the nickname Mortimer's Hole. As you can see, this bloody murder was all the result of quite the tale. It seems as though all this conflict really did revolve around a selfish few. There's a weight on this land from all the turmoil and blood, but was it all worth it? Seems the rich just drag generations of people into their mess, all for a bit of gold and to have their castles. Me, I can't complain. I'm here telling you this story and well, they all ended up dead. But then again, don't we all? Though, I suppose it doesn't have to be so messy 